I've got four Facebook ad targeting hacks that actually work to drive sales. Whether it's leads or direct sales on your website that you're looking for, we are driving them by the masses right now for our clients using the four Facebook ad targeting hacks that I'm sharing today. I'm Brandy with Life Marketing, the digital marketing agency with a mission to help small businesses grow. And the first targeting hack I'm gonna show you is how to find new people that are exactly like your customers, meaning they will be extremely likely to purchase because they'll mirror your existing existing customers who have already purchased. And the best part is that Facebook does all the work. Facebook finds the new customers for you with just a couple clicks on your end. You're gonna go to your ads manager, click audiences on the left, click the blue create audience button and click lookalike audience. Then click create new audience and click custom audience, customer list. This is gonna prompt you to upload your customer list. You can see it'll tell you exactly how to format it in an Excel sheet, what info to put in which columns, etc. It's super easy. And then once that list is uploaded, it'll take you back to the lookalike audience screen where you want to select the region or country that you want your new audience to reside in and select the 1% option, which I'll explain why in a second. And then you'll hit create audience. Now, what did we just do? We just created a lookalike audience out of your existing customers. A lookalike audience is a group of new people that Facebook finds who look like your existing customers. Facebook's AI finds these people based on behavior patterns, demographics, and more. And you can see we use it in almost all of our client campaigns for the simple reason that it works. It's one of the quickest, most profitable cold audiences you can target. Cold meaning people who have never heard of your brand before. Now, there are a couple things to keep in mind with this. You want a minimum of a thousand customers or more as your source audience to create a lookalike audience out of. Anything less than that and you're not as likely to get a strong lookalike audience because Facebook doesn't have as much initial data to go off of. You also always wanna choose the zero to 1% range like we did because with that toolbar, you're choosing how closely you want your new audience to match your source audience. Smaller percentages more closely match your source audience while larger percentages create a bigger, broader audience. So pick the 1% range to ensure the lookalike audience most closely resembles your source audience, aka your customer list. People in your source audience are excluded from your lookalike audience, so if you were worried about that, there's no need to be. Also, if you don't want to manually upload your customer list, you can select your Facebook pixel as your lookalike source, select website as the event source, and then choose whatever event you have set up with value, which is typically purchase. This route will just automatically pull customers from the pixel, but it is a little bit more complicated. The route that I showed you before will be the easiest for beginners. And lastly, while it may be tempting to add more people other than just customers to your source list to get the size up to a thousand or higher, I would refrain from doing that. Some people wanna create a lookalike audience out of a combination of sources like their Instagram engagement, their customers, their website traffic, and their their email subscribers, but you're not gonna get a strong likely to purchase audience at the end from doing that, which is the whole point, right? So stick to customers as the source audience. You can see our client list uploaded here and we've created a lookalike audience out of it. Now, the second targeting hack is how to stop letting 97% of your website traffic float away, never to return, never to purchase. What am I talking about? Well, 97% of people who go to your website statistically leave without ever coming back unless they are retargeted. Retargeting is when you exclusively target people who are familiar with your brand in some way. I always say that business owners who are struggling to grow and are not retargeting are like fishermen reeling in fish, throwing them back to sea and then wondering why they have no fish in their bucket. So you wanna start retargeting if you haven't already. And in this instance, we're referring to retargeting website traffic. Traffic. But retargeting could also mean your Facebook and Instagram video views, your Instagram engagement, your Facebook page followers, people who opened your Facebook lead form but didn't complete it, and so on. For the sake of this video, we're going to stick with website visitors. So same thing as last time on the audience's screen, you're going to hit create audience, custom audience, and this time hit website. Make sure your pixel is selected, choose all website visitors, and then choose your audience retention, which is how many days you want people to remain in this audience before they're removed and the maximum time you can set is 180 days. So just think about your sales cycle and choose the number of days that makes the most sense for you. Then name your audience something clear and recognizable to you like website visitors in the last 30 days, for example, and hit create audience. You'll now be able to select this custom audience in the ad set level so that you can retarget your website visitors and get them back to your site. But there's one more thing you wanna do before you hit publish on that ad set, which brings us to the third targeting hack, 
how to avoid asking existing customers to become customers. You don't wanna waste advertising dollars trying to convert people who have already converted. And even if you're in the e-commerce world where you are seeking repeat purchases, you typically wanna avoid targeting recent customers within so many days of their purchase. So back to the audience screen, click create audience, custom audience, and you can go one of two ways here. You can select customer list, which will take you to a screen that you're familiar with at this point where you manually upload your customer list. The only issue with this route in this instance is if you choose this method, you'll need to manually re-upload your list every so often to ensure that all clients and customers are accounted for. So the other option here is to select website, make sure your Facebook ad pixel is selected as the source, and for events, you can either select an event if you've already got that set up, like lead, or if you have a URL on your site that only customers reach, such as a thank you page or a confirmation page, you can choose people who visited specific web pages and you can enter that URL, mark it as contains certain words, or you can do an exact URL. This is helpful, for instance, for an e-commerce store with order numbers or ID numbers that are in their confirmation URL. You can just do URL contains and then put the first part of that URL. Or like for us, we're a service-based business and only clients are filling out questionnaires for us. So we use one of our questionnaire URLs to indicate that someone is more than just a lead, they are currently a paying client. Then again, under audience retention, you can select the number of days you want people to remain in this audience before they're removed. Name your audience as customers or clients so that it's recognizable to you and hit create audience. Doing it the website source way instead of the customer list way means that your Facebook ad pixel will constantly be updating this audience without you having to do it. So if you've gotten new customers since your last manual list upload, your pixel will pull that data here and those people will now be included in this audience. Now, what you need to do is go back to your retargeting campaign where you're retargeting warm website visitors and in the ad set level, make sure you exclude this custom audience of customers that you just made. For instance, you can see that we exclude website traffic on our career pages too, because people who are looking to work for us are not looking to hire us. So we don't wanna waste ad dollars advertising to those people. Now, the fourth targeting hack is for all my e-commerce store owners specifically, and it's how to exclusively target people who have a track record for buying products from Facebook ads. When you're in the ad set level and you've got your audience all selected, maybe it's people with certain interests or demographics, etc. Make sure that you add this targeting option. You're going to click narrow audience and you're going to search for engaged shopper. An engaged shopper is someone who has clicked on the shop now CTA button on a Facebook ad in the last seven days. It's a behavior and not an interest. So these people have a history of shopping products advertised on Facebook. And the reason you need to click narrow audience first is because if you just lump this targeting option in with the rest of them, it's an either or situation. It may show your ad to an engaged shopper that doesn't meet any of your other main targeting criteria or vice versa. Whereas this way you're saying, in order for someone to see this ad, they need to meet any of my other criteria I've got in here and also be an engaged shopper. That's why when you click narrow audience, it says and must also match right there. So make sure you're adding this into your cold ad sets to qualify the people that you're targeting and get your overall cost per result down even lower. 